Good afternoon, Com 3928. Uh, Dr. Mueller here, noon on Sunday. Uh, not off to a good start today. For the first time, maybe ever, I'm having Panopto uh, recording trouble. Uh, I had about, I have a lot to go over with you. I had about a 20 minute intro to coding sheets done. I don't, it, something went wrong, it didn't record right. So. I'm going to start over. I'm going to probably try to be more brief, but I've got to get a lot of information to you. This next assignment is not due till March 13, March 5 through 9. We're coming up into uh, App State spring break. So this is a two week gap. Okay, so I got to show you how to uh, print out and mark your coding sheet. Then I've got to show you how to clean raw data. Then I have to have you download JASP, which is our open source uh, survey statistical tool. Then you have to import the cleaned data into JASP. And then we'll start looking at just some real simple, you know, descriptive, dis, uh, descriptive outcomes and some of the variables like age and income, et cetera, and one reliability test. Again, that's a lot, but we've got to do that all across two weeks. Okay, so let me try again. Capture main screen. Um, I'm going to go up into here now and we'll see what happens because I, like I said, I had problems before. So capture main screen. Here is our class block right here. Okay. And for start, look, look at this energy coding sheet. Uh, click that. It's a PDF. Okay. And in the PDF, it's, this is nothing more than a printout of our survey. Okay. You need to mark this for every single item, every measure, because this has to indicate how you're going to label the survey on the data sheet. This is very important. If you don't label it so you understand what the variable is, it'll be like looking at a foreign language. You've got to know how to label to make sure you label this how you want it so that each of those, again, you know, uh, vertical, each of those vertical columns is at one item in the survey. You've got to label it correctly. All right. So here, print this out, get a paper, or, you know, pen or pencil. Right here, the very first question, informed consent. I agree or I don't agree, right? One, two. It's always going to be in order. This will show as a one. This will show as a two. On the survey, you might want to mark this informed or informed consent. And, you know, you can't leave spaces in these variables. So, you know, it might be that underscore informed underscore uh, in consent. Okay, that might be the variable you label and then underneath you see a bunch of ones and twos. Okay, we'll get to that. But label it here because that's how you're going to label it on the on your data. Okay, then we're going to go three. There's a whole bunch here similar. Remember this, this is the first one. Based on an energy bill, how do you perceive, and under each one, remember, there's six items in a matrix. This you would label possibly like this. Energy bill easy to understand. That's all of this, one through seven. You'll see that that's a variable. Energy bill, fascinating. That'll be a one variable. Energy bill, good ideas. That'll be a variable. Does this make sense to you? Every variable has to be labeled for every one of these rows because in a, in a data set, you've got to remember what consumers were answering. Okay. Energy bill, sincere. Energy bill, trustworthy. Energy bill, clear. Okay, so you've got those six. Then we start with Instagram. Same thing. You'll be laid. Remember, this is going across the data set too, left to right. Instagram, easy to understand. Instagram, fascinating. Instagram, good ideas. Same thing, but you're labeling these six for Instagram because you got to remember they were answering the Instagram. Okay. Some of this, by the way, it prints out a little rough. I'm sorry. That's just how it outputs, okay? Then you go Facebook. Easy to understand. Facebook, fascinating. So right on here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Label these one through seven so you can see that in your mind. Circle Facebook, easy to understand. Facebook, fascinating. Any way you want to mark this up because you've got to envision the survey instrument in your mind, right? So you can see that and label it in the data. Okay, do that for Twitter, same thing. You do that for website, same thing, six of each, right? Then you go down here and we do an email, the six, okay? Text message, the six. So you can see how these are all structured with labels across all the data, okay? 
And then down here, we get to these eight. These are the next eight. They're called true untrue. Okay? I might call these true of me because I would remember these then. So I'd remember this one, web page, true of me. I would label it that way. This one would be energy bill, true of me. However you want to label this, just so you remember what they're answering for each of these eight. Remember, each of these relates to one messaging platform. Okay, so you label those right on here. So you, you remember, again, this is your coding sheet. So you remember how everything's going to go. This is going to be your open-ended text. We're going, to, we're going to copy that and paste that into a complete different Excel file. We'll get to that. Here's where it gets really important because here we're talking about descriptive categorical variables. It's no longer, they might be ordinal, but it's not like one through seven, like a, a range and a score of a, one of the other items. Here we're talking about, like here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's seven, this will, this will be one to seven, but nothing like the other one to seven. So you might put here square feet. I would label that variable square feet, but right on here, because if you see a bunch of threes, in the square feet data, what's that going to mean to you? Well, you go back here and look. Well, guess what? Most of our people live in a home from 1,001 to 1,500 square feet, right? So when you see those numbers in categorical, you've got to go back to the coding sheet to see what's going on, okay? Monthly power bill. Here's the cost. You know, you got to label that variable. People in home might be a good label for that. You label that one. Here's six, okay? Zip code, again, we'll copy and paste that, put that into its own uh, separate Excel file. Talk about that later. Occupation. Look at all these. By the way, when you see an other box, if anybody populates answers in there, it's going to show as a whole separate column in the data. We'll just scan that and look and see how many people answer differently. If so, if very few, we can eliminate it. If there's more, we have to talk about it. Okay, but remember, that's what this other box means. I'll show you that. Age, you got to label a variable age. Income, here's another one. Look at all of them here. You got to label that so you know if you say, boy, we've got tons of uh, one, two, three, we got tons of fives. That means 60,000 to 69,999. So we know that's where that big income, predominant income group is. Okay, household income or income. Ethnicity might be the label. Here's all these. Again, with the other box, here we might see quite a few others. We have to talk about that. Education, gender, right? Current relationship status. So you've written on here, you've numbered all these, then you're to the end. This is a coding sheet. Have that next to you, keep that next to you um, at all times because it's going to be really important you have that now that we're going to move on to data, okay? And I'm going to uh, get to that in the next video. All right, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.